This is a live channels television event. Gentlemen, welcome to the first of its kind, never before held town hall conversation between the youths of Anambra State and the candidates for the 2013 governorship election. Welcome, I'm Maupe Ogun. May we rise for the national anthem? as advised by the National Orientation Agency, we'll take the second stanza of the National Anthem as our opening prayer. O God of creation, direct our noble cause, guide our leaders right, help our youths the truth to know, in love and honesty to grow, and live in just and true, great lofty heights attain, to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Amen. We may now sit. Ladies and gentlemen, to you again I say welcome. In day wo. to our viewers at home, we say welcome to Anambra State. Before we go into this town hall conversation proper, we would like to take some messages from our partners. We will now invite uh, one of the representatives of the Anambra League of Professionals, a League of Anambra Professionals, to come and say a word or two. Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure as the president of the League of Anambra Professionals to welcome you to this very important ceremony. I'll start by thanking the board and management of Channels Television, the seventh time winner of the best television station in Nigeria for their cooperation and their support. I thank the governorship candidates who, in spite of the campaign, overcrowded campaign program, are able to make it here. The League of Anambra Professionals, our focus is to rebuild Anambra State. And I want to assure Whoever wins the governorship election come Saturday, the League of Anambra Professionals will cooperate with him to ensure that our dear state, Anambra, is rebuilt. I thank you again for your attention and for finding time to come. Thank you very much. representative of uh, Enough is Enough Youth Organization. Good 
Good evening and welcome again. Enough is Enough Nigeria is focused on good governance and public accountability. Our major campaign is RSVP. Register, select, vote, and protect. Register, obviously, we try to get young Nigerians between 18 and 35, which makes the largest voting block to register en masse. Secondly, encourage them to select their candidates wisely, and that's why we're partnering with channels to host this debate, so you have an opportunity to hear what the candidates who want to um, serve in Anambra State as governor have to offer. Third, obviously, you have to go out and vote next week, Saturday. And lastly, P for protect. And you're not only protecting your votes on election day by making sure you stand there, your votes are counted. INEC has also promised to release in, um, voting results polling unit by polling unit. So whatever is announced at your polling unit, you can verify that that's the same thing that INEC announces. And after that, there's four years in between an election. It's not just an election, which is the event, but election is in cycles. And the four years in between, we encourage young Nigerians to engage in the, election, in the governance process. Focus on what your elected officials are doing, how they are spending your resources, and how they are making um, good on the promises they make when they are out campaigning. Thank you once again, and welcome. Well, thank you very much there. Before we go into the uh, conversation again, I would like to introduce to you the candidates. I'm afraid, yes, as you can see, only one of them is here, but uh, hopefully the rest of them should join us in the cause of this program. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the top five contenders for the number one seat in the Anambra State. Beginning with Dr. Chris Nwabweze Ngige, who is the candidate of the All Progressives Congress. He is a medical doctor born on the 8th of August 1952. He hails from Alor Town in Idemili South local government area of Anambra State. Dr. Ngige is one of the founding members of the People's Democratic Party. In 2003, he was elected governor of Anambra State in what some have described as controversial circumstances. On February 6, 2010, Dr. Chris Ngige again contested for the governorship of Anambra State. In April 2011, Ngige ran for election for Senator Anambra Central on the platform of the then Action Congress of Nigeria. After a rerun, he was declared winner later that month. And now for the November 16 governorship election, Dr. Chris Mwabwezegege is flying the flag of the All Progressives Congress. Chief Willie Madabuchi Obiano is a candidate of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, APGA. Chief Obiano was born in 1957 in Aguleri Town in Anambra, North Senatorial District. A chartered accountant by profession and a graduate of the Harvard Business School, his professional experience in accounting and audit spanned over three decades, has taken him to the very top at Texaco and Fidelity Bank. A tactician and banker per excellence, Chief Willie Obiano was the executive director of Fidelity Bank. He was one of the main guys responsible for the successful consolidation of the bank. As the ED of the Fidelity Bank, Chief Obiano was in charge of business banking, corporate banking, not bank financial institutions, treasury. For the November 16 election, Chief Obiano will fly the flag of the All Progressives Grand Alliance. Dr. Ifai Patrick Uba is the candidate of the Labour Party. Born into a humble family of Mr. and Mrs. Alfonso Uba of Umanuka in Otolonewi in 1971. He entered into business at an early age and after many years grew into a real international businessman, having traded widely within the West African region. He is currently sitting on the board of over seven companies. His venture into oil and gas has turned out to be one of the biggest companies in the sector in Nigeria. Dr. Ifan Yuba is a philanthropist and has helped many to achieve their life goals. He is flying the flag of the Labour Party for their number of governorship elections come November 16. Comrade Tony Okechuku Nwoye. He is a candidate of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. 
The politician in him has been evident from his days as a student union leader. He led many struggles in pursuit of student and youth welfare, transcending the Nigerian borders. He has once led the Nigerian delegation to the World Youth Summit in Venezuela. In 2005, he was elected the Assistant Secretary of the PDP in Anambra State, a position he held till 2006. While in that office, he was beckoned on to occupy the vacant office of the State Chairman of the PDP in Anambra State. He assumed the office of the State Chairman of the PDP from 2006 till 2009. Comrade Nwoye is believed to have worked hard for his party both on the state and national levels. Little wonder he has received plenty of support since he won the primaries. Come November 16, he is holding on to the flag of the People's Democratic Party. Last but not the least, Mr. Godwin Tukunenye Ezimo is a candidate of the Progressive People's Alliance, PPA. He is from Umuchu in Aguata local government area of Anambra State. A publisher and businessman, Mr. Ezimo is a man whose journey into politics didn't begin only by seeking elective offices. He has over the years devoted resources in support of those willing to serve the people of Anambra State. His tries to fly the flag of the All Progressives Congress left some footprints in the party. Mr. Ezimo envisioned an Anambra that will help build a secure and investment-friendly state where an enabling environment will be challenged and motivating the people for development. For now, November 16, Mr. Ezimo will be flying the flag of the Progressive People's Alliance. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, a profile of the candidates. Unfortunately, only one of them is here, Dr. Chris Ngege. Ngege, you're welcome, sir. Uh, but we don't know why the rest of them are not here. It's either they're afraid of a debate or maybe they're held they up in traffic. Oh, okay. Uh, well, for some time now, you have been serenaded with the campaign posters, the billboards of these candidates, all of them telling you that they want to take you, the good people of Anambra State, to another level. The question is, how do they intend to do just that? That's why we're holding this town hall conversation. And we're hoping that at the end of it, you should be making an informed decision. But we already regret that only one of them is here right now. So we will listen to him and what he has to say. Dr. Chris Ngige, you have a couple of minutes to open the floor and tell the people of Anambra State what exactly you intend to do for them as governor of this state if you're elected. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, my dear good people of Anambra State, uh, I'm Dr. Chris Mwabwes Nkike. I'm a serving senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, representing the people of Anambra Central Senatorial District. I was governor here from 2003 to 2006, 33 months, May 29, uh, 2003, to uh, the uh, Before then, Before then, uh, I started my working life as a medical officer with the National Assembly Clinic in Lagos, after which uh, I was absorbed into the Federal Ministry of Health after the military coup that happened in December, 2000, uh, uh, December 1983. And uh, I now became a staff of the Federal Ministry of Health. I rose to become a deputy director in charge of uh, hospital services before I joined partisan politics in uh, 1998. I was a founding member of the People's Democratic Party, uh, PDP, and I was even a, a, an officer of the party serving as uh, Assistant National Secretary and Zonal Secretary in charge of Southeast. I was an NEC member of the party. I left the party after I became governor, because I was uh, really, uh, as a matter of fact, forced out of the party by those who wanted to deregister some of us. I became an Action Congress member and uh, flew the flag of Action Congress in uh, 2010, governorship election in this state. Uh, later, I also flew the flag again for the Senate seat 
in, this, in um, April, May of uh, 2011. I know that I want to uh, seek your vote to come back. And one question that readily comes to mind is why do you want to come back after eight years of uh, having left the same position and even having a job as a senator? My answer has always been simple. And uh, the simplicity of my answer is that I had a work plan when I came here in 2003. And out of that, my work plan or blueprint, I don't know, done about 23%. Uh, putting, uh, putting side by side my work plan with uh, the ANITS program of the present government, I discover that they have only done 7% of my work plan, which sums up to 30%. Now I have 70% done, and there's an English maxim which says that if you want something done well, you better do it yourself. And that is why I'm putting myself forward to come back to Anambra State, number one seat, and actualize some of those 70% that are undone. These 70%, uh, uh, some of them keep recurring. The issue of security of life and property, number one, I kept recurring. It did uh, recall when I took over in 2003, but I, I tackled it headlong and restored sanity here, and people had li li lived there secured. There's people here slept with their two eyes closed. And uh, today, that canker worm has really said, said again, and the people of Anambra State are in dire straits because they can't even come home here. They can't come to their home state. They have their mansions here, but they cannot come. Burials, uh, wine carrying are being done for our young kids who want to get married in Lagos, Abuja, and even Port Harcourt. So this is a fighting situation. It's uh, customary to the Igbos of Southeast, not to talk about the people of Anambra State. And I want us to, to put a stop to that. We will put a stop to that by engaging our youths. Because I believe in prevention, that prevention is better than cure. I'm a medical doctor by training, and in medicine, that is the first maxim we do. Because it will cost you more to do curative care than to prevent it. Prevention of uh, uh, insecurity will bring down the high cost of even buying the, the security gadgets that are needed. But I, need to, I want to tackle them in a two-pronged attack. First, I want our youth, because this is a youth-based uh, program, I want to say that I want to train our youth in such a way that they have work. Unemployment is the major cause of insecurity in the Southeast, especially in Anambra State. So I want to tackle insecurity from the base. First, my school system has to change. The curricula has to change. I want to put skill acquisition into the uh, school curricula. I had tried it uh, the first time before, and that is why I had 20 pilot secondary technical schools. In the technical wing of the school, people are taught how to paint, do painting, plumbing, uh, welding, carpentry, electrical wiring, uh, tailoring, and uh, all the other skilled acquisition uh, jobs. This is because our educational system is fundamentally flawed. If you go to a place like Ghana, the, all the schools are mostly in the main, 80% well, technical secondary based. I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut you there. Yes. Uh, it's OK to clap <laughs> if you're impressed. <laughs> um, but we will take a break now, and we will be back shortly. Just stay with us.